When the world was dark and the city was quiet, you came. You crept in beside us and no one knew. Only the few who dared to believe that God might do something different. Will you do the same for us this Christmas, Lord? Will you come into the darkness of tonight's world? Not the friendly darkness as when sleep rescues us from tiredness but the fearful darkness in which people have stopped believing that war will end or that food will come, that sickness will end or that the church will care. Will you come into that darkness and do something different to save your people? Will you come into the quietness of this city not the friendly quietness as when lovers hold hands, but the fearful silence when the phone has not rung, the letter has not yet come, the friendly voice no longer speaks, the doctor's face says it all. Will you come into that darkness and do something different, not to distract, but to embrace your people? Will you come into the dark corners and the quiet places of our lives? We ask this not because we are guilt-ridden or want to be, but because the fullness our lives long for depends on us being as vulnerable to you and open as you have come to us, wearing no more than diapers entrusting human hands to hold their maker. Will you come into our lives if we open them to you and do something different? When the world was dark and the city was quiet, you came, you crept in beside us. Do the same this Christmas, Lord, do the same. This night I welcome you to worship tonight and Merry Christmas to you. This is the season that we have longed for and waited for. We have journeyed all through Advent and now we've arrived at the cradle to celebrate the ultimate gift. As we celebrate tonight, we will be sharing communion. I invite you, if you haven't yet already, just go and grab something to eat, something to drink, at this point, it can be Christmas cookies. That's completely fine. We also invite you to have some sort of candle nearby. And during, when it's time to light our Christ candle in a few moments, you will be ready to participate in that with us. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Merry Christmas and let us worship the God who gifts us with this newborn baby. I guess it's only appropriate we begin 2020 Christmas Eve with a Zoom session. Who would have guessed this is how we'd celebrate the birth of Jesus? Yes, but think of his birth um, in a barn. Plus, Mary and Joseph were out of town for a census of all things. 
right? And throughout Advent, these four weeks leading up to Christmas, we've talked about finding hope, peace, joy, and love in unexpected places. So I guess this this is the unexpected place we find ourselves in tonight. Seems fitting. Well, should we start worship now? After nine months of waiting, of chaos, of mask wearing, of cancellations, of closures, of changes, of uncertainty. We are finding God in our homes, in the company of friends and family, in unexpected joys. We are finding God in trying times and in places we hadn't thought to look before. After nine months of visits from angels, instructions not to fear, and a growing belly, Mary and Joseph head now to Bethlehem. We are finding God in the donkey, the angels, the twinkling stars to guide the shepherds. We are finding God in the first cries. We are finding God in the newborn baby. So let us pray. In our journeying, we find you, God of unexpected places, in new stories and familiar ones. We find you in our doubts and our certainties. In our fears and our courage. In our questions and our wonder. In our care of one another. Help us to journey on, looking expectantly to find you. Amen. Amen. Jesus, our brother, kind and good, was humbly born in a stable of wood, and friendly beasts around him stood. Jesus, our brother, kind and good. I said the donkey, shaggy and brown, I carried his mother up hill and down. I said the donkey shaggy and brown I said the sheep with curly horn I gave him my wool for his blanket warm He wore my coat on Christmas morn I said the sheep with curly horn I said the cooed him to sleep that he should not cry we cooed him to sleep my love and i i said the dove from rafter high thus every beast by comfort fell in stable dark was proud to tell the gift they Do you remember from perhaps your childhood or from your children or grandchildren or nieces and nephews, those wonderful sound books where especially early readers trying to learn words, you'd go through the story and all of a sudden you would come upon a picture and then you'd press the, the corresponding picture and out a sound would come. The sound book is how we will tell the story now of Jesus's birth. And it went a little bit like this. God asked Mary to do something very special, to hold in her belly the baby Jesus. Ah, my baby. Mary said yes to God. 
Joseph was there by her side through it all. What a miracle! Just before Mary was to deliver the baby, Emperor Augustus, their ruler, ordered that all the people had to go back where they were born to be counted. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So Mary and Joseph would have to leave their home in Nazareth and head the long, long way to Bethlehem, where Joseph was born. Slowly, Joseph walked, and Mary rode on a donkey. Yeah, yeah. Together, they journeyed to Bethlehem, the city of David, to be counted. One, two. Along with all the other people. Along the way, Mary prayed the baby wouldn't be born until they got to a nice warm room to stay in for the night. But Joseph knocked on so many doors looking for a room. Joseph noticed an inn, but the innkeeper who answered the door... Sorry, no room here. But Mary's prayer was answered. The innkeeper said they could stay out in the barn out back. Good thing, because Mary was ready to have her baby. Ah, my baby. What a miracle! Just outside the city, the shepherds kept a watchful eye on their sheep in the field. while their sheep wandered about. Then suddenly an angel appeared, many in fact, and they told the shepherds, Do not be afraid. 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 The angels went on to say that they were messengers of God and that they had good news. The baby Jesus was born that night. The shepherds were amazed and began to look around.
to see if the stars would guide them to where Jesus was. Indeed, the stars sparkled in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, pointing to the manger far. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, pointing to the manger far. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, pointing to the manger far. They twinkled as if to echo the angels' wonderful news. The angels then said to the shepherds, follow the brightest star. It will take you to Bethlehem. And remember, do not be afraid. 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 It was there in a barn full of animals. <laughs> eah, eah. Ba, 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 ba. that they saw for the first time baby Jesus, God as a teeny tiny baby. What a night it had been. What a long way from hearing the innkeeper say, Sorry, no room here. The stars beamed brighter than usual that night. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, pointing to the manger far. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, pointing to the manger bar. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle little star, now I wonder what you are. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, pointing to the manger bar. The angels sang a chorus. The shepherds returned to the fields, praising God for all that they had seen and heard. Joseph kept saying, What a miracle! But Mary just quietly pondered all these things in her heart. Ah! My baby. Joy to
the Christ child, the Emmanuel, born to us again this night, invites you to light your candle with me. The Christ candle lit Jesus, the light of the world. We continue now, our children will guide us through all the colors of Christmas as we continue to tell the story of this night. Christmas is red. It's a shiny new sled. It's candy canes and toy store lanes. It sprinkles on sweet bread. It's packages with bows. And Rudolph's right bread, red nose. It's pictures drawn and dressed up lawns with warm mittens when it snows. It's the drummer boy's drum, his pa-rum-pum-pum-pum. It's Santa Claus and cranberry sauce. It's apples, pears, and plums. It's presents that we send to family and to friends. It's jolly cards and merry hearts. Yes, Christmas is red. Christmas is green. It's an evergreen scene. It's holly sprigs and mistletoe twigs. It's emerald lights a gleam. It's garland on rails and pine needle trails. It's winter boots and funny elf suits. It's that old Mr. Grinch tail. It's very Swiss pies and plaid bow ties. It's fresh potpourri that smells Christmassy. Stockings hung high and tinsel on trees and grass iced by freeze. It's Christmas tree balls and artwork on walls. Yes, Christmas is green. Christmas is gold. It's bright ribbon unrolled. It's jingling bells and warm yummy smells. It's heirlooms you're not supposed to hold. It's dancers all tapping among holiday trappings. It's nutcracker crowns and Christmas Eve gowns. It's glittery gift wrapping. It's a big turkey roast and walnuts you toast. It's crackling fires and glorious choirs. It's an ornament you love the most. It's kids shouting, wearing halos and robes. It's treetop stars and old church bazaars. It's Christmas is gold. Christmas is blue. It's a winter sky hue. It's flannel sheets and shaped cookie treats. <laughs> it's a lake frozen through. It's big puffy coats and huge parade floats. It's juniper trees and blue spruce wreaths. It's writing Santa notes. It's a sweater mama knit stretch yet still fits. It's turquoise lights in the darkest of nights. <laughs> it's a snowman's outfit. It's memories old and new of loved ones gone too soon. It's an Elvis song and nights growing long. Christmas is blue. Christmas is white. It's warm candlelight. It's mountain tops and small fancy shops. It's turtle doves in flight. It's December snowstorms and blankets so warm. It's angel wings and the song that we sing about our dream up for Christmas morn. It's sleigh rides through snow and tea lights that glow. It's North Pole tales 
in frosty exhales. It's cocoa with marshmallows. It's a star shining bright on the holiest of nights. It's powdered cakes and paper snowflakes. Yes, Christmas is white. Christmas is brown. It's pine cones scattered round. It's caramel corn and copper French horns. It's winter's frozen ground. It's firewood piled high and reindeer that fly. It's cinnamon sweets and gingerbread treats. It's homemade pecan pie. It's a cradle soft with hay. and a donkey's gentle bray. It's God within a baby's skin on that first Christmas day. It's shepherds kneeling down and wise ones gathered round. It's Mary's sigh. <sighs> And Jesus's cry. Yeah. Yes, Christmas, Christmas is, is brown. brown. Oh, holy night, the stars are bright. Shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear 
Christ was born. Oh, night, oh, holy night, oh, night divine. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. O oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and lay him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for, see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those he favors. Shall 
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. It wasn't supposed to be this way. You weren't supposed to be home tonight watching on your screen. Tonight was a night that you and I should have been in that church on the hill, together, not apart. It shouldn't have been this way. You should have been holding a candle unlit throughout the worship service, and then we were to light one another's candle from the flame of Christ born anew. At the end of the service, we would have collectively blown out our candles together. A thought now unthinkable to us. It wasn't supposed to be this way. You were supposed to bring your young children for the four o'clock service, wriggling and wrangling them into a costume, getting them set up to be an angel or a donkey or a shepherd. It wasn't supposed to be like this. You were supposed to see Dennis Schultz coming to the worship service wearing some sort of Christmas paraphernalia, just something that was blinking or flashing or a tie at minimum, this is what should have been. Tell you what, Dennis, I'll, I'll save this for next year for you, okay? Wasn't supposed to be this way. Yet try telling that to Mary. She needed to go on a donkey to all the way to Bethlehem to be counted for a census. Never on all of our Christmas cards that we ever have received, I doubt that even one has mentioned that this whole narrative takes place in the context of a governmental census. They call it registration or going to be registered. It was a census. Have you ever seen that on a Christmas card? It's the most wonderful time of the year to be counted by your government. It wasn't supposed to be this way. And yet they traveled the far way. And what what was in addition to what we know of as the census, not only was travel required for Mary and Joseph, for Joseph, of course, to go back to his hometown, but their census by the Roman Empire was a means of them assessing if they were taxing the people at, the, at a high enough level. People of that day in the grips of the Roman Empire were heavily taxed. 
So can you imagine the nervousness that Mary and Joseph would have likely experienced as they traveled to Bethlehem, now worried about, are we going to be able to make it? What if the government charges us even more in taxes? Are we going to be able to support this newborn? An additional worry amid so much worry. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Tell that to Joseph. He wanted to take Mary as his wife and probably live a quiet existence. He wanted to offer a room for Mary to give birth in. It wasn't supposed to be this way. There wasn't supposed to be a no vacancy sign in the window of the inn. It wasn't supposed to be this way this December 2020. The virus never should have gotten this bad. The highest rates of infection and death, 300,000 people not here to celebrate Christmas as they were a year ago because of the virus. 18 million cases throughout the U.S. And how hard hit that has fell on especially vulnerable communities, vulnerable populations, the, our Black neighbors and the elderly and children. Now, those who are, they're, they're saying that those who are needing uh, food pantries for every five now needing those services, Two are coming, two out of the five are coming for the very first time. It wasn't supposed to be this way. So many people hurting, out of work, with few options. It wasn't supposed to be this way. And yet, and yet, this is still the world into which Jesus has been birthed. God still, this is one thing that didn't get canceled this year, the birthing of Jesus. God's face in a baby's skin as we heard in our children's book. God did not miss out on this opportunity to come and come anew. Bringing fresh breath for all of us who have held our breath what seems to be this entire year. A fresh breath born to us amidst a world that is struggling to breathe because of climate change, because of brutality. We've heard repeatedly this year, I can't breathe. And now Jesus comes, God's gift to us as almost a first breath in us again. If you've ever had the chance to hold a little newborn, first thing you probably do is smell their head. It's almost instinctual for us to do that. The fresh breath of a baby breathing in that wonderful baby shampoo, baby wash, whatever it might be, that sense of newness, that newness of what God has done. Now, to breathe it in, in the midst of a world where some are breathing only because of a ventilator. This is the world in which God creeps in, comes beside us, and shows us the way. This is the hope that we have anticipated. This is what we've been waiting for. Fresh breath. Yes, it shouldn't have been this way. The world still 2,000 years later, still so 
corrupt and violent, still the inbreaking of so much greed. And yet, and yet Jesus comes as a savior, as a Messiah, coming into our world, even in 2020, coming with new life to show us the way that finally we get a bit of comfort, of respite, of renewal. God's offspring, Mary's firstborn, birth anew, a fresh and deep breath for all of us. Merry Christmas. Amen. This evening is all about ritual. Those traditions that we cherish and carry out year to year are so important to us, especially this night, especially this Christmas season. And Jesus also, towards the end of his life, created a ritual, one that we would continue to share in, and we invite you to share in right now. We remember the story behind that ritual, how Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. And there he shared a meal with them. During the course of the meal, he took bread, broke it and said, this is my body for you. Do this to remember me. Go ahead and partake. Then when the meal was drawing to a close, when the night was beginning to come to an end, Jesus took the cup and again raised it and said, this is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many. As often as you drink of it, do this to remember me. Go ahead and partake. As you continue to enjoy those morsels, we'll pray together. Gracious one, what extravagant gifts you've given to us. The gift, gift of hope and peace. The gifts of joy and love. The gift of you in our lives to come into this world as a human being. Someone we can relate to and talk with and begin to know you better through grateful for these gifts now at the table, this cup of blessing, this bread, and may it help us to celebrate, and may this ritual remind us of your goodness. Amen. People of First Congregational UCC in South Milwaukee, I wish you a very Merry Christmas despite the pandemic. I pray that you will gather as a beloved people, even if it means remotely or very distantly. I pray that you will endure the coronavirus and these difficult times and come through on the other end, resilient as ever. You have a special place in my heart. God bless you. Amen. This Christmas, I am praying for every absolutely exhausted nurse out there caring for people continuing to do so even on the holiday i am praying for every doctor who has over and over extended themselves to the point where it's scary the amount of hours that they have spent at the hospital or in the clinic just caring for others the impact of this collective trauma on first responders, police officers, all of our frontline workers and essential workers. This is all so much. So that's what I'm praying for this Christmas. Greetings, friends. This Christmas, I pray for our church families to come together to show love and grace 
to one another. In the midst of a year that has divided us in so many ways, I hold to the hope that the Christ child is able to overcome all that separates us and unites us in love. And I pray that God's extravagant grace will prepare a way for us to live in love with one another. Blessed Christmas. This Christmas, I pray for all of our city workers, our first responders, and everyone else who's working on this Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, but especially for our public health professionals and public health workers everywhere, the amazing job that they've done this year and, and the work they're still going to have to do in the year ahead to help keep us safe from the pandemic. This Christmas, I'm praying for teachers, paraprofessionals, staff members, and administrators. This school year has been unlike any other, yet they have continued to do an admirable job of educating our students in new and different ways. I pray for a restful holiday season for all and a blessed new year to come. This Christmas, I am praying for patience. Patience through the winter, patience on when we can return to church, patience on when I can return to my work campus, patience with my family and friends, and patience for what the future will bring. God is in control, and I need to have patience. Amen. Mine is a prayer of thanksgiving for eyes. Actually, my new appreciation for eyes. Having faces covered with masks has forced me to put attention on eyes. Through this, I've learned how expressive eyes can be. They can express warmth, openness, and understanding. They can smile and even laugh. For this, I am grateful. This Christmas, I am praying for the families affected by the coronavirus. The families that lost loved ones, jobs, and even businesses. Also, I'm also praying for the uh, safe and efficient spread of the vaccine that's right around the corner. I'd also like to pray for the world, that the world affected by global warming and just all the de decay that humans are causing, that it somehow recovers. This Christmas, I am praying for my friends and family to be safe and healthy through these tough times in the world. This Christmas, I'm praying for all for the homeless that don't have somewhere to go that's warm and and safe. I'm also praying for the poor that don't have enough money to afford to have a Christmas. This Christmas, I am praying for my dear friend Meg as she is going through chemo treatments for breast cancer. This Christmas, I'm praying for the health and safety of my family. This year, I'm praying that everyone is able to find happiness through the struggling holiday season. This Christmas, I am praying a prayer of thanksgiving. Truly, I get to be your pastor. God has given me this wonderful calling, and that is to be your pastor. And I'm not just saying that because it's Christmas Eve. I'm not just saying that because I am the pastor. I am truly grateful for all of you and just this thing that we've been able to do together, not just this Christmas Eve service, but all of this digital worship stuff. We've been able to really pull it off and to do it well and to do it together. So I am praying a prayer of thanksgiving. This past Sunday, we discovered this gift box within our question mark box, and it had a note on it. The kids might remember it had a very important note on it, and it said, do not open until Christmas. Well, thankfully, the waiting's over now. We can hear that something is inside. Truly, there are quite a few things inside. 
Or this is the box that we have in our home, in our living room, and it contains all the baby Jesuses. So as we start to put out all of our nativity sets, we tuck the baby Jesus into this box. And so now we get to celebrate and put out the Christ child born to us, born in our hearts, born into a world so incredibly in need of a savior. Truly, the ultimate gift, born to us. And we invite you this night to consider a gift to your church, to continue to support its ministries, that we can continue to be a light in this world. Thank you for all, all the ways that you give. Amen. Jesus, the light, the one who came in and crept beside us. This light we celebrate. We invite you to look into your candle that you have lit in your home now. And let us sing together. As a pastor, I usually stand at the back of the church at this point in the service. And there's always this secret wish that I had, that after all the candles are extinguished, 
that everyone would just stay. Stay and linger to look and appreciate the gift that God gave to us in the baby Jesus, to admire the candles, to soak up all the song, the scriptures, the merriment of it all. Sometimes I wish we could just bottle that up and stay and gaze and look, but we do depart. We depart now, and yet we carry that peace of the Christ child. We carry that with us into the world. We carry the stillness of this night, and yet we can continue to linger. Peace of Christ be with you always. Merry Christmas and Amen. They came from near, they came from far, following a distant star to where he lay. Not being sure of what it meant, but knowing it was heaven sent, they made their way. And the creatures gathered round And didn't make a sound And the angels cried The angels knew what was to come The reason God had sent His Son From up above It filled their hearts with joy to see Knowing of his destiny came tears of love And the creatures gathered round And didn't hear a sound And the angels cried I've often thought about that night And wondered if they realized the star so bright was sent to tell all the earth the Son of God a gift of love a Savior's birth and the creatures gathered round and didn't make a sound and the angels cried and the angels And the angel